Carl's work has a multifaceted strength that allows it to be viewed and discussed in many ways. It's a different collection, but I love it. I love all of it. Uh, this work is very, very amazing. You know, I just love the surrealistness of it. Like he, he, he was able to capture surrealism in his work. You know, uh, I love this one specifically with the letters. I'm not sure. Like I'm finding it difficult to make words of what's written here. But the work is very clean, clean cut, and it's very finished. I don't associate this sort of work with uh, Carl, you know, always associating me him more with figure uh, studies and stuff. But I'm really impressed. I think it is huge, it is substantial, it, is, it really grabbed my attention. Um, I've only seen a few pieces, but I am completely intrigued. They're so strange and surreal and kind of unexpected. I think it's cool. I like the way he uses black and white. I've seen him use black and white for the last 50 years. And uh, he changes black into white in pictures next to each other and gives an amazingly different feel to them. I think it's quite amazing and the abstract of it all um, is capturing because of how unique it is. And I quite love that this is a mentor mentee kind of exhibition, you know, Carl being the mentor and Luandi so being the mentee. I love the synergy they have. I think this is nice showing flux, which is change in life and in nature and and like nothing set in stone. And Carl conceptualizes, visualizes and he knows how to put it together. This is a big exhibition. I think there's well over a hundred works here. A major statement by an important South African artist. Carl's drawn landscapes are dominated by rock forms and structures, and he pays direct homage to the rock type that makes up the parallel mountainous ridges that traverse Pretoria, the Mahalisberg, the Dustwood Rand, and the Skirverberg. In a series of drawings, the Tiefskloof series reflect particular structures and textures, the pristine and the ageless. Stone, the most durable of materials, carries the record, first in fossil deposits and then in stone artifacts that can be found everywhere in and around the city of Pretoria. For the past 150 years, the same mountainous ridges have been quarried for hard building stone. Tons of hewn blocks and slabs have been removed, leaving ridges scarred with gaps and cuttings. In contrast, as the city develops as the capital of the new South Africa, there are steel and concrete tower blocks, cranes and scaffolding protruding above the ancient ridges and skyline. In Carl's drawings, I see and feel this layered and altered landscape that is informed and inspired and has almost literally laid the foundation for his creative vision. And there is a larger context. Following the radical break from the past made by artists in the early years of the 20th century and following immediately on the horror and chaos of the First World War, there developed in Europe and the United States new approaches to representative that is objective or figurative art. In the United States, a movement known as Precisionism emerged. Edward Hopper and Charles Sheeler drew inspiration from American city life and industry. Paintings associated with these movements often have a dreamlike quality, often about alienation, with unsettling or even dark foreboding tendencies. Carl can broadly be associated with his lineage. And I think that Carl, aware of past and contemporary stylistic movements, and as an artist who has internalized a deeply familiar layered African landscape, he is also responding to very distant, strange, yet visually accessible environments and landscapes. Carl's drawings depict a vast emptiness of rock-strewn rock-structured landscape with a presence not of the living but of a ghost-like often fantastical remains of human existence. In some work there is, I feel, a post-apocalyptic disquieting stillness but not the overwhelming chaos that we often see on the news. In Carl's work 
there are also hints, indications of life, or at least hope. Sources of light, support structures, defiance of gravity, rain on the horizon, perfect white cubes that cannot be associated with chaos and destruction. I refer to one work where an extended cliff face looms ambiguously like a tsunami wave and on the horizon another mountainous range or wave. In the corner at the base of the cliff there is a beacon of hope, a source of light within a cave, a symbol of refuge. Or, if the whole meaning is switched, the cave becomes a lair, the source of light becomes sinister, the cliff an insurmountable barrier, the whole mysterious and foreboding. Carl is an articulate drawing maestro, and in particular an artist fine-tuned to drawing at its most powerfully elemental. I think that the achromatic grayscale range of paper is a critical factor in Carl's work. His drawing may have evolved over years out of preferences, experiments and understandings of what visually and expressively works best for him. There is work exhibited here that includes limited colour, but Carl may argue that full colour could be a distraction or a softening, a decorative additive that would take away from a primary vision. In Carl's work, I'm aware of the feel of the paper, the choice of white, as well as the blackness of the drawing medium. I cannot imagine or want to imagine his work as full colour drawings. There is a primal quality in the limited achromatic range. There is an austereness and spareness. In the white pureness, there is space and stillness. In the marks there is a richness of texture and there are subtleties of tone, an invitation for the viewer to focus without distraction on the imagery, on this other world that Carl has created. It is for the viewer in private contemplation to engage with these magnificent landscapes to access, seek and find. I would like to congratulate Carl, very much indeed, on this comprehensive and powerful statement on what he has accomplished and would like to wish him every success with this exhibition and with his future creative work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.